from a secret location in it's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, my God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues. You really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. Here we are together again on the radio. This story from the Associated Press, Dateline, Raleigh, North Carolina. Two weeks after a devastating revelation sent her husband into political exile. Elizabeth Edwards, that's Mrs. John Edwards, isn't getting the steady sympathy usually afforded to a woman scorned. That's right. Listen to this. Instead, she's faced criticism from dedicated Democrats who think she was too willing to keep the affair a secret to help John Edwards' political ambitions, as well as her own. At a time when she was expected to hold a prominent role in pushing an agenda of improved health care for Americans, she stands silent. While fellow Democrats converge in Denver, Colorado, to nominate Barack Obama for president, Edwards remains in seclusion in North Carolina. It seems an odd way to treat a woman with incurable cancer wrong by a cheating husband. The latest in a series of deep hardships in life that includes the death of a teenage son. But some former followers have questioned the recklessness of keeping the affair under wraps. Even though her husband, a former U.S. Senator, two-time presidential candidate, and the 2004 vice presidential nominee, said he confessed the affair in 2006 before the campaign began in earnest the next year. I think she's complicit, said Brad Crone, a Raleigh-based Democratic consultant. Obviously, she knew. While she's the victim, she clearly didn't stand in the way of the cover-up. It wasn't until earlier this month that John Edwards acknowledged publicly that he'd had an affair with Riel Hunter, a rookie filmmaker hired by his political action committee. On a liberal blog that Elizabeth Edwards frequents, she explains why she stayed silent after her husband told her of the affair. She said, this was our private matter. And I frankly wanted it to be private because, as painful as it was, I did not want to have to play it out on a public stage as well. Many people have come to know Elizabeth Edwards. 59 is a more forthright, revealing woman. She wrote a memoir in 2007 that brought readers into the most wrenching moments of her life. The death of the couple's 16-year-old son and her 2004 breast cancer diagnosis. An attorney who worked in private practice and also taught at the University of North Carolina's law school. She first found out about the cancer the day after her husband and John Kerry lost their bid for the White House four years ago. She's always had a passion for politics, known for routinely writing about health care policy on the Internet. She has served as a visiting fellow at Harvard where she held discussions with students and gave a speech after her husband dropped from the presidential race earlier this year. Presumptive Democratic presidential nominee Barack Obama said in June he would be, quote, partnering with her on health care policy. And she was expected to serve as a campaign voice to challenge Republican candidate John McCain on the issue. Yet, during a visit to North Carolina, two weeks after Edwards admitted to cheating on his wife, Obama didn't mention Elizabeth Edwards or her husband. It's a setback for both of them, said Chris Lahane, 
a Democratic consultant who helped President Clinton through his cheating scandal. The question for her as well as for him is, what is their foundation? What gives them a platform to engage in public issues? Their big challenge is in convincing people that they will continue to be active in politics and they're going to continue to have a voice. In a post on the liberal blog Daily Coast, where Edwards has her own diary, she pleaded for privacy and later seemed to explain why she stuck by her spouse and his presidential ambition. She said an imperfect man with a truly progressive vision who spoke to and for those whom others ignored. Yes, that is who I supported, she wrote. An imperfect man who had come to face his own imperfections and was seeking to redeem himself to those closest to him. Yes, that is who I supported. Some responded to the affair with words of kindness, while others angrily suggested that keeping the secret was no less a sin than the one committed by her philandering husband. She knew. She knew this bomb was waiting to go off. She knew. She kind of loses my sympathy, wrote one poster. I believe we are all owed a huge apology, not self-serving claims for pity by both John and Elizabeth Edwards, who both knew about the affair and both decided to go forward and seek the Democratic candidacy, regardless of the titanic risk, wrote another. Well, and it goes on. I could sit and read you this story all day. The bottom line here is John Edwards had an affair, and we all know that. He went on Nightline and told the story. We had one caller recently who was upset that I keep bringing it up. But it's great material. So uh, he went out and had an affair with this woman who made videos for his campaign, who had no experience, no business doing videos, and who has been paid copious amounts of money for that, and God only knows what else. And uh, Elizabeth Edwards found this out, and then um, here's the question. Was she obligated to tell that she was a victim of this? Was she obligated to reveal that? There she was appearing with her husband when he was announcing uh, his run for the Democratic nomination. There she was sitting next to him and he uh, there sitting talking about how uh, with her cancer he didn't know if she should if he should go ahead with the campaign. And she insisted that he go on with the campaign. And remember that? Remember seeing that? At the time she was sitting there with cancer she knew that the guy had an affair. She knew that the guy had this big time bomb ticket. And she said nothing. Now, I agree with the bloggers. I think, I think she should have told. I think she should have said something about it. Or at least she should have convinced him for real. Don't run for president. Because if you run, I'm going to have to tell everything. She should have done it. Now, it's easy for me to sit here. I don't have cancer, and I'm not married to the guy. But uh, come on. The two of them were pulling a scam. Because there was no way that stuff was going to stay hidden, and there was no way it wasn't going to be an issue. No way. So I wonder, um, you tell me. You tell me. Should Elizabeth Edwards have come clean? Should she have told everybody that she found out that John Edwards was having an affair? Because otherwise she was complicit in pulling off this scam. There he was running for president, knowing full well that this controversy lurked around the corner. I think she should have told. What do you think? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I think you are the foulest piece of excuse of a human being. Good, I'm glad you feel that way. telling our youth, our young people of America, that they should be treating women like jurors. Yes, and, uh, they should. I feel very sorry for you. It's the Tom Likas Show. Like this show at 1-800-5-800-5-800-5-800-5-800-5-800-5-800-5-800-5-800-5-800-5-800-5-800-5-800-5-800-5-800-5-800-5-800-5-800-5-800-5-800-5-800-5-800-5-800-5-
And his wife, Elizabeth Edwards, was devastated. She had cancer. Later on, John Edwards announced he's running for president with the support of his wife. Doesn't mention that this happened. His wife doesn't say anything. Should his wife have told? Some people think yes. In fact, I think yes. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, I, the show. Thank you. Yeah, the first time I've actually ever felt compelled to call in, so excuse me if I'm not as eloquent as I normally am. I'm actually excited I got through. I love you. Thank you. Anyway, so uh, I don't know why this issue is still going on. I mean, it should be. it should have been dead the moment John Edwards confessed it to his wife first. Now, I mean, if, if he had lied about it and he lied to his wife about it and he was using taxpayer money to pay for this uh, hotel room to be with this woman or, or whatever, then I could see it being public knowledge. But he dealt with it with his wife in his own home. If, if, we were, or if he was a private citizen, I mean, he would be afforded that luxury of, you know, his wife and him kept it a secret and they'd go on. Well, that all life. sounds good. But let me give you a scenario. Okay. Let's say instead of losing the nomination to Barack Obama, that he won. Right. And so now you've got John Edwards facing John McCain. And there he is. He's at the convention. He gives the big speech and he's ready to go. Then the bombshell comes out that John Edwards has been banging some chick, and some people think that uh, he's the father of her baby, and that stuff came out after he got the nomination. What would that do to the chances of the Democrats winning? Very true, but uh, lucky for us, it didn't happen that way. <laughs> they did not know what the outcome was going to be when they announced that John Edwards was going to run for the nomination. They thought he might win. Right. I guess you put it in perspective. Uh, if you put it in that perspective of winning the presidency, pres presidential nomination, I guess uh, it throws it all out of whack. I'm, I'm coming from the... In that case, the two of them would be responsible for causing the Democrats to lose for a third time. Very true. Thank you for opening my eyes. Take me out with a bong hit. All right. Here it is. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Joe on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Is that G for me, Joe? No, it's the other Joe. Okay, got it. All right, I wasn't here. All right, I'm I'm on the air with Tom. I can't believe it. But Neither can I, can I. Here's what I can't believe. I'll talk to the screener well, later on. Why in this? Why are we still in this puritanical mode? where we can't accept that a man has desires and goes out and meets other women and and does it with or without his wife's knowledge. I, I understand that that's the reality. In fact, I've done it myself. But when you run for president, the people are going to use that against you. We're still in that mode. And you have to live with it. You know, I always say... I love talking about how things ought to be, would be, could be, should be. But you really have to deal with things the way they are, not the way they should be. So so it's just a deal breaker as far as you're concerned. No, I, as far as I'm concerned, I, Bill Clinton had an affair. I didn't care. But that that's not the point. The point is, here are the Democrats. They've lost two elections in a row, and the guy's going to run for president. And this bombshell is waiting out there to go off. If it, it did ever go off, it did go off. That's it. But, but let's say let's say he um, got the nomination. Maybe it, it wouldn't have went off. Yeah, but the point is that risk existed. And had he gotten the nomination, the the Republicans would have made hay with it, and that would have been it. Yeah, well, I, I'm with you on that. I don't want to see another Republican in there. Well, Although that I'm, that's I'm exactly sure. what would have happened. I'm not so sure the Democrats are going to do the right thing with the economy, but but that's a whole other subject. That's not my point. I, we're not talking about who you support or don't support. Uh, we're talking, in this case, about whether Elizabeth Edwards should have either said, 
either you tell or I tell, or I'm just not going to go on stage with you. You're on your own announcing your nomination. I'm I'm not going to support this. Yeah, I guess it, it all depends on how she feels about it. If she if she doesn't really care. No, it doesn't matter how she feels about it. What matters is how voters would feel about it if it came out as a bombshell. I think it's her responsibility to tell the voters, my husband um, has been messing around. Certainly, at the very least, it was her responsibility not to be supportive of him, not to come out in public and support his candidacy. She could have said nothing. Uh, I don't. I guess I don't agree with you on that. So you think knowing that there was a bombshell that could destroy the party would certainly destroy his candidacy? Well, but that's really his issue. He's the political genius. He's the one that. Well, why is she out there with him? Why? Why is Barack Obama talking about her as being his partner and working on health care reform? Come on, she had aspirations to be out there too. Well, I guess any any woman who's running along with, uh, or not running along, but married to a man who's running for president, wants to live in the White House and be what they call the first lady. Well, there you go. So she is equally complicit. Do you, but. Do we know that she knew? Yes, we know that she knew. That That's a given. The, the, John Edwards already talked about this on Nightline. The, 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 don't bother arguing that. It's already uh, established as a fact. Yes, she knew. Okay. Well, I, I just think that, you know, it's. I, I guess I don't think people are that small-minded anymore. You don't? That would cave in, that that would cave in a whole... Um, uh, election. No, what would cave in a whole election is if it was a secret and then it came out as a bombshell. For example, there have been stories about John McCain and how he met his wife and uh, was he still with the other wife when he met this wife and that story's already out there. And it's been out there before. This is something that nobody knew about. Yeah. By the way, I, you know, Keep up the good work. Take me out um, the tribal methodology. Oh, uh, the uh, African tribal style. Of course. Here you go. Baninge, 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 so penza. Baninge, 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 so penza. Kotale nenge asika mama. Oya kotale nenge asika mama. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Brian. On the Tom Likas show. Hey Tom, how's it going, man? It's okay. Good. Hey, the the way that you you guys are talking about it, I'm not sure if you're saying that he owned up to having this affair back in 2006 to his wife, and then it was kind of over. But wasn't he in the Beverly Hilton Hotel with her like two two or three weeks ago? That yeah. Well, that's what uh, the, the, certainly uh, the National Enquirer said. That is what Fox News Channel said. And that's what broke the whole thing, right? That's right. So he was actually not only doing it back in 2006 when he owned up to it to his wife, he was doing it all the way through the last two years until he actually got caught. Well, we don't know if it was all the way through. All we know is these recent visits to the Beverly Hilton. We don't know how long it had been going on or if it had stopped. We have no idea. Yeah, but I mean, you know, it, it doesn't look real good. No, you know of course. But the, 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 but the point we're making here is Elizabeth Edwards knew this in 2006. Yeah. Why was she sitting up there uh, and supporting his candidacy, knowing that this bombshell was out there? Because she's greedy, just like Hillary okay. did, did the same thing. Yeah, well, I don't disagree with that. Yeah, I mean, they, they both have their own, you know, they, I don't... I, I don't really care for John Edwards. I didn't care for him before, but, you know, I, I, I don't think that uh, she was probably in it for her own ambitions and, you know, to be the first lady and, and be Hillary number two, I think, is the way it looks. And she played the, the cancer thing up for all the sympathy that she could get out of it. Now she's going to be the trying to play the sympathetic, you know, cheated on wife, and I, I think it's blowing up in her face. I hope it does because you know she's not she's played it not the right way. Brian, thank you for that. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Here comes Curtis on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how's it going? Great. 
Hey, I agree with you 100%. And if people would open their ears and listen to you, they would know why she didn't tell. She's just power hungry, like you tell us. Women want a man of power, a man with money. Of course she's not going to tell anyone about it. She wants to die with a legacy, be a first lady, something like that, you know? Eat the scraps off the table of the White House. That's what I believe. Yeah. And I, I do think that, it, look, if she didn't want to tell, the least she could have done is not appeared with it, not said anything, not mm -hmm. gotten involved, say she's too sick to be on the campaign trail, whatever. Yeah, I I agree with you. People ought to listen to you a lot more, you know, and there wouldn't be a bunch of dumb arguments and debates about stuff like this or any, even a question about it, you know. Everyone knows why she didn't say anything. I think you're right about that. All right, you kick me out with a bong hit? Of course. Here you go. Can we all just get a bong? It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, John on the Tom Likas show. Hey, John. How's it going? Hey, Tom. How's it going? Great. That's awesome. Well, uh, you know, I, I personally believe that uh, I think all of our presidents should be cheating on their wives because I don't trust the guy that doesn't cheat on his wife. Uh, well, <laughs> you understand, though, that uh, that's you. But the average middle American doesn't feel that way. Yeah. Well, I'm just stating my opinion, you know. After you all, understand, if a guy said in his campaign commercials, oh, and by the way, I cheat on my wife, he would not win. He'd get your vote. He'd get my vote. But that's about it. Yeah, you should run for president there, Tom. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM. <laughs> that's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Amanda. On oh, the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Tom. Hi. Uh, this is my first time calling. It shows. Uh, I just had a comment. I mean, I think possibly she felt guilty about the whole cancer thing. Because a lot of women, you know, when they're in that situation, they know they're not long for this world. They have a man that they love. They feel bad, and they're like, why can't he live? Why can't he find somebody else? You know, they want to see them happy still. It could have just been a guilt thing on her part. She didn't want to ruin his life. Well, hers was in the process of ending. That's entirely possible. But it sounded to me like, I mean, they're saying there was pain and there was anguish. They're not saying she said, oh, John, just go out and meet another woman. It's okay with me. Why would there be pain and anguish if she said that? Oh, I'm sure it would hurt anybody. I mean, it's something you might want, but it's not going to be comfortable. Yeah, but come on. <laughs> if, if, if there was pain and anguish and somebody knows there was pain and anguish, that it is going to be an issue. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know why they're still together. If, if she would feel that way, it'd probably be easier to separate. Well, but. she's got cancer. What's she going to do? Go on Match.com? I don't know. Probably not the, the best place to meet somebody when you have cancer. I wonder if there's a dating site for people like that. There's one for people with herpes. Well, that one I understand, okay? But how about people with cancer? How about people with terminal illnesses? Is there yeah, a dating sure site for them? Groups. Support <laughs> groups, I'd imagine, would be the closest thing. <laughs> Looking for someone who doesn't want to play games and is willing to move very quickly. Oh, that might, yeah. Has political aspirations, please uh, <laughs> be willing to support me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I need somebody who's willing to pay all my expenses... And I've had over a million dollars in medical expenses and uh, someone who likes sunsets and puppy dogs. Well. <laughs> That'd be quite the dating site. Yeah, it would be. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. <laughs> you know, now that I said that, someone's going to do it. Someone is going to do the uh, uh, the uh, cancerdate.com website. It's coming. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Shannon on the Tom Likas show. Hi, Tom. Wonderful topic. All Thank I can you. say is that she held out because she's writing a book. Why would you not write a book on this subject? You can make money because everybody likes drama. Everybody likes big names. 
Makes sense to me. There you go. So, that was her incentive. Yeah. I, I think it's because she wanted him to get elected. And if she, if he got elected, then she'd be the first lady, and she'd get into the White House, and she could pick China patterns. Yeah, but you know that's not every woman's aspiration to pick out China patterns. I know it's not mine. Mine's going out to you know. Going out to what? We will never ever know. Don't tell me that. Dean tells me there already is a cancerdate.com. Now, did somebody reserve the URL, Dean, or is it an actual site? It's an actual site? <laughs> Free to be a member. Well, I imagine, I can imagine what their collection procedures are when someone doesn't pay. <laughs> Answer, I'm, I'm going to look that up right now. What am I doing? Cancerdate.com. Let's see. Typing that in. What is this? Bringing, bringing single cancers together. Single cancers? Is that what they call them? Uh, oh, it's the zodiac sign cancer. <laughs> See, they missed the boat. They should have had people who have cancer. For God's sake. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here is Ryan on the Tom Likas show. Should, should Elizabeth Edwards have either told the public that she, she knew about John Edwards' affair, or should she have refused to participate in his campaign, or should she have gone up there for that whole charade? Said, oh yes, I support John. I told him about the chemotherapy, the radiation, the cancer. I told him to go ahead and go for it. Uh, do you think she should have been up there? No. Ryan. Yes. That's you. Oh. I, no, she should have kept her mouth shut, to be honest. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't understand why everybody's getting involved anyways, you know, from what I, you know, I'm 23, I don't, I wasn't alive during the whole JFK and all that stuff, but from what I understand is America didn't care what any of the previous presidents said. They didn't care what JFK did, uh, you know, anybody's relationship. They didn't well, America, care. Well, so. no, but America did not know. You have to understand, in the days of JFK, uh, reporters were pals to the politicians. And it was pretty much ex accepted that Babe Ruth was an F around, for example. And, and uh, the reporters just thought Babe was a great guy, so they never wrote anything about it. Well, uh, well so could you kind of say that the media is kind of at fault for just keep on reporting and digging and I mean because it seems to me that ever since this all happened with Clinton and uh, people running for presidency uh, that you know they all have affairs they all do what they do but you know you get Clinton now which I felt was a good president um, and now John Edwards well, Clinton, wait, 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 wait. Clinton wasn't kicked out he served two terms and then there's term limits well come on they were under him impeachment lying I mean but Clinton because served out his full two terms. He was kicked out before the end of his term. No, he wasn't. Didn't he still have eight months to go? No. Where are you uh, getting this? Oh, well, my memory just serves me wrong then, Tom. Clinton I mean, I believe you. Ryan, Clinton was impeached. But being impeached doesn't mean being thrown out of office. Being impeached means to go on trial. And he did. Okay, I got you. My, my information was a little bit wrong then. Sorry, no, it was completely that. wrong. It was 100% wrong. It was 100% wrong. Not, not a little bit off. You were completely wrong. I was completely wrong. I agree. But, so, I mean, with that, what I, my main question was, I wanted to know, would that affect your decision in politics at all if you knew John Edwards got the presidency? Um, and, he, you know, he was running against McCain, and then you found out the bombshell dropped that he cheated on his wife wouldn't would that affect, affect me way? it wouldn't affect me but it would affect a lot of people enough that he would lose the election and the older they are the more it would affect them the older they are yeah even though those people that were older they grew up in the age where the media didn't get involved in the in the presidency they they didn't that's care. why they're offended they think today everybody's a slime ball compared to when they were kids well, I guess I just don't. 
I, I mean, I, I agree with you, but I just think that's plain stupidity, and that's why the, the country's going down, you know, the toilet pretty much. Um, you know, I'm not saying I'm perfect. Obviously, you corrected me 100%, Tom, and I appreciate it. Um, but there's a lot of people who play with their emotions and not play with the actual true hard facts. Well, that, but that let's face it, all those people have the right to vote, too. You know what I'm talking about? Thank you for the call, Ryan. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Elizabeth Edwards is being criticized now because she sat up there on the stage, I believe she was in a wheelchair when John Edwards announced he was running for president. And she knew that this bombshell existed, that John had had an affair, that she found out, and it caused her pain and anguish and all of that. And yet she supported his run for the presidency and said nothing. And there are people saying right now that she should have said something. Do you think she should have said something or not? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Most of the women at the gym are there for the picking. Oh, I don't know about that. I think you've been misinformed, Tom. Well, darling, all I know is the results. I've picked all the low-hanging fruit. Exactly. It's the low-hanging fruit. And if it's round, brown, and low to the ground, I'm in. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. So the wife of John Edwards, Elizabeth Edwards, oh, the pain and anguish she went through and she found out while undergoing chemotherapy and radiation for her cancer that her husband John Edwards was having an affair with Riel Hunter. Yes. And um, later on, she was sitting there in the wheelchair as John was announcing his run for president. She actually spoke in support of this. But said nothing about the bombshell that awaited. And there are some people saying she should have said something. Cancer or no cancer. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is Mark on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you? Great. Very good. Well, hey, I uh, got a new theory on this one. Okay. I think it's uh, maybe a case of the ultimate payback. How so? Well, imagine, uh, you know, if he got the nomination and he became the uh, the president before anybody found out, and then uh, Elizabeth, she's really got nothing to lose. She's, I mean, let's face it, she's dying of cancer. So once his, uh, once his bombshell came out, um, could you imagine him being impeached by, uh, you know, a Democratic Senate? Uh, talk about the humiliation, and that would be the ultimate payback for, for her against him. And, and she's going to die soon. So, I mean, she doesn't have to. She's not going to live through that whole mess. So are you thinking that she uh, did that, uh, hoping that later he'd get caught? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I mean. Well, then why didn't she say something about it? For themselves. Uh. I think that's a little, you know, if I were undergoing chemotherapy and radiation, I don't know if I'd have the energy uh, to be that diabolical. I don't know. I mean, hey, you know, would, would it or would it not be? I mean, that would be the ultimate humiliation and uh, and payback for him to be judged by his own peers in the Senate and maybe impeached and, and knocked out. He wouldn't be impeached for that. You don't think, you don't think they'd figure out a way to get him out of there? Nope, they didn't get Clinton out. If they didn't get Clinton out, they're not getting anyone out for that. Yeah, but that was Republicans. They, you know, they had a, uh, they would have a harder time um, of its own own peers. I think it would be easier. I don't agree, but <laughs> you're entitled to your opinion. I appreciate the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Luis on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yeah. Hello, Tom. Yeah. How's it going? Yeah. I was hearing your show. Actually, I just got in. I was listening to how uh, you were giving an, uh, a comment about this uh, about somebody making a mess out of uh, this lady not uh, giving or shouting, shouting out when she found out about uh, the affair that was going on. Uh, there could be excellent administration without... Uh, needing to be a holy person, in other words. I mean, who doesn't have an affair nowadays? That's who not what we're debating. 
point. That's not what we're debating. Bill Clinton had an affair. I think he was a good president. I think most people agree he was a good president. Yeah. So that's not what we're debating here. Okay. okay. It's, it's okay. having it come out as a bombshell before he ever gets elected. Right. Okay. Well, obviously it's going to affect him because there's always people on the other side of the, uh, on the other party trying to destroy whatever he's doing. But um, I think. But he might not have gotten elected at all. He might not have gotten elected at all. Hmm. Well, he might have not, but it definitely affected him. Definitely. I mean. What do you mean it affected him? Huh? What do you mean it affected him? Well, because you have. By the time he dropped out of the race, nobody knew. Ah. Read what? a paper, son. Huh? All right. Okay. No, try reading the news, please. All right. Okay. All right. Renee on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Got all your callers stuck today so far. Tom, you're my secret daddy. Ooh. I tell everybody that I hate you, but I listen to you secretly. You'd love You'd love to meet my open palm in a dark room sometime. I'd love to meet anything about you, but I have a question, and I wanted to know your opinion yeah. regarding this subject. Um, do you think if Hillary had spoken up prior to um, the campaign with Bill or during, you know, while he was running about his affairs, do you think it would have made a difference in him getting elected? And do you think she should have spoken up because obviously he was having affairs as senator? One could argue that many of the uh, things that uh, Bill and Hillary Clinton wanted to accomplish did not get accomplished because of the time they spent defending themselves against the charges. I mean, how much time was wasted discussing Monica Lewinsky? Exactly, but during his Jennifer running, Flowers. Uh, uh, during his running of, do you think she should have spoken up and said... Well, I, I, I say they have an option. They could speak up or just stay out of the limelight. She had ulterior motives. Staying out of the limelight could have been done for ulterior motives, too. Yeah. Well, I put it this way. Your... I tell you what, had had she said nothing, had she not appeared to be supportive of that, she might be the nominee of the Democrats today. I wish she was. Would you have voted for Hillary? I would vote for anybody but John McCain. <laughs> right on. Take me out. Please, with a bong hit and a thank you, Jesus. Here you go. Thank you, Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here's Ross on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing? Doing great. I got a proposition for you. In light of all this, I got the greatest idea. You and I should get our own cancer dating website together, and we should call it chemostree.com. <laughs> hey, hey, Tom, can you take me out with a bong hit and a Kurt Cobain? Here you go, Ross. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Chris on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how are you? Great. Good. Hey, we're miss. I think we're missing a bigger lesson here of life. For all the ladies out there, all the wives who think it's cute or funny to stop satisfying your husband, cancer or not, your husband will cheat on you. Doesn't matter. Well, that's if that's a, that is very true. If you're in a wheelchair. If you're dying of cancer, I don't want to minimize her struggle, wheelchair or not, cancer or not, if you stop satisfying your husband, he will cheat on you. Well, I think in most cases that's true. There are exceptions to every rule, but I think in most cases you are right. And, not only that, and then I was thinking, you know what, she should do a PSA for Like It's 101. A PSA? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Life lesson learned. So, all you ladies out there, take note. Thank you, Chris. Tom. Appreciate the call. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Demetrius on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How's it going, Father Tom? Uh, great, son. Um, I, I'm wondering, would Carrie even have been, is that 
grounds for impeachment to have had an affair before he was in office? Well, first of all, uh, having an affair is not grounds for impeachment, and it wasn't with Bill Clinton either. Okay. The grounds for impeachment with Bill Clinton were lying about oh. having an affair. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure about that. Okay. Yeah. And then I, I had a question. What's what's why don't you like McCain? What's your your thing about McCain? Uh, I had a personal experience with John McCain. Okay. In which he tried to get me fired from my job. Oh well, yeah, I wouldn't like him then either. <laughs> All right, Father Tom. Well, I appreciate it. Can you take him out with the bong here? Here we go, Demetrius. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. TJ on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey. Uh, so I had a couple perspectives on this. One, I would say, like um, Elizabeth um, Edwards. You know, obviously from the perspective of a wife, she doesn't want to talk about this because it's embarrassing and and you know sort of shameful. Um, even though she didn't do anything wrong, you still get that. It still is that way, right? Well, yeah, yeah, but I, I don't know but, why. But, um, well, I mean, in the public view, right? We're not talking about you and me. We're talking about in the in the in the public yeah, view. Yeah, unless you were the doer, I don't see why you'd be ashamed. You don't think women are are ashamed when their husbands cheat on them? If, if they a have no reason, they have no reason to be. If a if a girl ah, zero tolerance policy, why'd you have to do that? The Tom Likas Show. Yeah.